What's up guys? Today I want to talk about and show you, you know, I'm going to show you this UFO trigger. Um, this is going to be what I'm using in my bass drum and I'm super pumped to, to get this thing in here. I think the build is really cool. So the first thing is I just want to show you guys kind of like what comes in one of these boxes and then we're going to set it up and of course try it out. So um, I did open the box already so this white stuff was probably packed a little bit better but um, I kind of put it in there so you can see what comes in the box in fact I know it was packed better but <laughs> um, yeah so this is the long stem jack and that's an option that I opted for and I, I think you should too if you get one of these triggers regardless if it's the bass drum or not that's the standard octacone with the actual piezo and it comes with disconnect so install is going to be really easy um, you know no soldering or anything and this is my favorite part, I think, about the trigger is this foam pad that's on it. I just thought it was awesome. It's perfect. Um, it's going to give you the right feedback underneath the beater. Um, and it has nice adjustability here where you can adjust how close it is to the head or far away, um, you know, after you install the actual trigger bar. So, And you can do the same with the, the part that has the cone on it right there, too. So the actual trigger adjustment and the pad adjustment for feel is great. You can also slide that back and forth or up and down I guess to match up the height of your beaters which is you know that's going to be perfect once it's in there as far as the build it's nice and sturdy steel thick solid steel with rubber grommets so you're not going to be fighting any you know triggering issues um, it just feels really nicely built all right so now that you've seen everything that's inside the box let's go ahead and go through the install First thing is, if you guys have a drum already like in your kit, make sure you unplug it before you pull it out because I didn't and that was sad. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so loosen these L things at the end and pull them out all the way. Yes, I called them L things. I don't work at Ace Hardware, you know. So um, you can actually install this with the lugs that are there so you don't have to drill. But I'm going to install it in the center because I want to be able to move that pad up and down and have it not like shift left or right. So I'm actually going to be drilling today. And what I did is just put a marker in the farthest inside part of these uh, brackets and lined up the front of those with the beginning of the bearing edge. You can kind of see right here. So now I'm going to drill my holes and come right back to you. All right, so once you get everything drilled, you're going to go ahead and install the trigger bar. Um, and you can see, in my opinion, it looks pretty clean. Besides, if you do in the center, if you do install it in the center like I did, you are going to have a screw that's going to show. Um, and I don't mind that really as much. I still think it looks clean. And the, the jack actually looks really nice. The one that they give you, it has a nice like finish on the outside. So... Um, Oh, also, the uh, the screws that I got were just from, like, Ace Hardware. They're, like, one-inch long screws with a couple washers and a couple bolts. All right, so now we're going to actually install the cone and the piezo onto the trigger here. So there is a right side to do this, and you want to look at your piezo. And the one side is actually written. It's, it's handwritten on there. It says top. But, you know, if you have this exact trigger and setup, you know, you can just use my video. Um, you know, the larger side is where the cone goes, and the smaller side is what sticks onto the actual bar, like so. Alright, so next you're going to actually need to wire up your trigger to the jack. Um, don't be intimidated by this, it's really easy. You want to find the positive and negative wire. Um, the positive one has the white line on it, so the negative, you just want to slide onto the sleeve of the jack, and that's just the longer metal thing you can kind of see in the picture you know it's the longer one and the positive goes onto the shorter of the inside two tabs and you can't see the two because it's on it so you just want to wire it up like that make sure they're not touching and then I kind of recommend to you know wrap one of them at least in electrical tape and then do both of them like how I have in this picture that just makes sure that they don't ever touch or you know move around in the bass drum all right, so we got everything installed. Now I want to show you guys how this thing performs. But before I can do that, I just have to show you guys how quiet it is. Because the first time I sat behind the kit, I was blown away. How quiet this pad is. It's the quietest pad on my kit now. It's like it doesn't even exist. It's insane. So I just want to show you with phone audio compared to the snare drum.
right, and here's the direct audio. So before I give my final thoughts on this trigger, I just want to pull up the mobile site so you guys can see what it's like if you go and want to order one of these triggers for yourselves. Um, I highly recommend to look at all those pictures that they have up there so you know um, exactly what options you're selecting or not selecting. You can see I don't have a whole lot selected, just the long stem jack, but besides that I think it comes with everything you need to get great results. So what do I think about this trigger? Um, I think it's probably the best you know, bass drum trigger for a conversion that you can buy. Uh, uh, for the price, you know, it's under 100 bucks, and I think it performs great, it feels great, and it's super quiet, which, you know, at the end of the day, they are e-drums, and, you know, the quieter the better, right? So I highly recommend this if you guys are looking for a bass drum trigger. I don't think there's a better one for your money.